All right, welcome back. As we approach the end of this 200 lesson course, I want to take uh, some time, really in this lesson and the next, to talk about some kind of, uh, well, cheats. And that's because hieroglyphics are complicated. I mean, obviously, there's you know, hundreds and hundreds of them. You've got single sounds, double sounds, but there's a lot of shortcuts. We've talked about them throughout, but I want to kind of summarize some of them and point out the way a lot of these shortcuts are used in unique ways. So one thing we've talked about a lot is there are hundreds and hundreds of determinatives. If it's an animal determinative, that, the word is for that animal. If it's something else that you don't recognize, that's OK, because at least you know it's a determinative because it's at the end of the word. And it's really just there to help you figure out what that word could be. Now, other times, a determinative can be actually part of the overall Stella itself. Now, it helps to know who it's about. So if you know whose Stella it is, but in this example, you can see this man holding a large cow leg is actually a determinative inside the sentence. So the sentence, Chepus Nikan Snobi Maharu, translated, the, but it incorporates that man into it. So let me show you how that works. I've written it out here just to make it a little bit larger since it's kind of like it's small. All right, and the first thing we're going to want to do, like with anything, is identify how are we reading. Is it right to left or left to right? And we can do this usually by identifying the animal heads. Unfortunately, we don't have any animal heads in this case. But we do have these glyphs here that help guide us, the, the foot and the bolt of cloth. So this tells us we are reading into the foot. So it's going to be right to left reading, not left to right. All right. And you have to be careful because things like, you know, n, ka, n, you can't tell. <laughs> it could be left to right or right to left. All right, now, so let's recognize what we do know. Again, for the ka of, we recognize, and we recognize ma'a haru, the justified, or, you know, their version of rest in peace, tr true of voice, literally. So we've got those words. All right, great. But what's the word in the middle? Well, logically, we know for the ka of blank, the justified, it's going to be a name. And it happens to be this name. I'm sorry it's blurry. I had to try to uh, get a good shot. But uh, no noting the order of one, two, three, and four, this is Sanobi. And you may know this going in, at least you should, because whoever's tomb you're in, or whoever's Stella, if you're looking at the tomb of Sanobi, you know all the names are probably going to be Sanobi. So it makes sense for the Ka of Sanobi, the justified. See how you can work out the name and where it's located based on the word surrounding it. But what about this top word here? So maybe you don't recognize that. We did cover this one in vocabulary, but again, I know that was a long time ago, but hopefully you have some flashcards. All right, so this is the word chepus, which is the word for foreleg. Again, it's written right to left, so we would reverse it left to right in order to assist us English readers to read it quickly. But you'll notice the determinative that is interjecting into the full sentence comes right after this word, the word chepus for foreleg. So there you have a foreleg under the word for foreleg. You can see how the determinative is worked into the picture itself. Clever, right? If you were just going to see the word chepus for foreleg written out, you might see it like this with a small determinative. That's you know, of the, of the uh, cow leg there. So it would be transliterated like this. But by actually incorporating a man, Sonobi, holding the ox leg, well, now you've incorporated the determinative into the Stella itself and overall into the beauty of the piece, of the full wall. So now you really are seeing how the images are actually part of the sentence itself. The image here is a determinative that tells you the vocabulary. Pretty cool, huh? Let's look at another quick example. So here's another Stella, and what are these guys doing? Well, hopefully, uh, with a little uh, help and taking the uh, vocabulary, which is going, or the, the words, are going, you, you can figure out based on purely the visual what this says, whether or not you know the vocabulary. So again, noting whether it's left to right or right to left. In this case, it is a left to right read. So we'll write it out. So we have saput shwa. And then, again, that determinative at the end, something you don't recognize, is a determinative, meaning a glyph at the end, if you don't recognize it as a one, two, or three consonant sound. 
So this happens to be the determinative for a boat, for a skiff. Hmm? Does it look kind of familiar? It looks kind of like what all those guys were standing on. All right, so here you have, so here you have the determinative for skiff, but the full sentence, so put sashima, uh, which means binding skiff, or in English, binding a skiff, or binding the skiff, but looking at the picture, there you go. What are they doing? They're binding a skiff. And you could see the skiff itself that they're on looks just like the determinative of the skiff. There again, another way the image reflects the words. You recall what we did about 10 lessons back with Sonobi spearing the fish and throwing at the birds? Again, looking at what there physically is a picture of, you see a man spearing fish. And knowing this is Sonobi's tomb, if that's where you happen to be standing, well, there you go. It's Sonobi spearing fish. And here he is throwing at birds. Same thing. Sonobi, you're standing in his tomb. That's how you know the name. And then you can translate the rest of the sentence. So with hundreds and hundreds of determinatives out there, you should absolutely also consider how much the actual phrase, the fry, the stella, the image on the stella, the art, is actually part of the full understanding, not just the words. All right, this was a really important one. Thanks for sticking in with Doodling with Purpose. We got two more lessons to go and some more hints to come. We'll see you next week, and congratulations on making it so far. See you next time.